If you've ever gone shopping for booze, I'm pretty sure you're actually doing it wrong. If you want to find out how to do it right, well, uh, I guess explain that. Hey guys, it's me, Noah Galoot, and to my left we have T, who you know and have seen, so we'll move right on over here to the far more important person today. This is Nikki Sanseri. She is a uh, cocktail expert here in Los Angeles. You can find her places like Little Dom's and Dominic's. She's even on Sagat's 30 Under 30 this year, which means I'm very old. The most important thing that ever happened, though, in the world, in the history of the world, is that she got T and I drunk on an episode of uh, The Food Theater recently, and it's great, and there's booze. Yeah, I mean, three words, guys. Butternut squash bourbon. Clicky. Check it out. It's amazing. All right, well, today uh, we're going to have Nikki teach us some tricks about how to buy not just alcohol, but I believe uh, good alcohol? Yes, good alcohol. <laughs> when you go shopping for booze, it can be a little overwhelming. You kind of don't know how to buy things. And sometimes you're like, I guess I'll just get the one that costs more because that probably is better. And that's not always the case. That's actually not the case most of the time. If you're on a budget, you actually should get the things that are not advertised as much because advertising creates a price point for them. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's better to actually pick something um, that you have learned about from a friend or a show. Or, or an awesome bartender yes. on a show who knows what's up. There's a lot of different kinds of booze out there. So basically, we're going to break this up into two parts. Today, we're going to focus on the lighter in color liquors out there. Mm -hmm. So what are those, Nikki? They're called uh, white spirits or white distillates, if you will. So that means that they're unaged. Um, there are some spirits that they take this white spirit and then age it. Um, and then you'll get a brown spirit, but it all, everything just starts out exactly like this. Now, Nikki, I've noticed that there are no plastic bottles here. No. The plastic jug is usually an indication that, that vodka is, is completely rancid. So you're saying, like, pop-off is bad? Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Anything you pick in high school is probably bad. The $2 for a gallon of vodka, I mean, price does matter a little bit, <laughs> and that is definitely a great example of how it does matter. So we, we have glass bottles. It's um, the first thing we want to look for. It doesn't impart any sort of flavor into your vodka from your surrounding area. Um, plastic is actually pretty porous, so if you leave it in a room with garlic for a week, you might have garlic vodka. <laughs> Coming soon to Coming a, why soon. would you drink that? <laughs> uh, vodka all, uh, starts out, it's grains and vegetables is what you distill it from. And you basically make a beer. So they make a beer. Whoa, 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 <laughs> stop the clock. <laughs> so that would mean that if all other alcohols are basically made from vodka and vodka is made from beer, then all alcohols are kind of beer? You use the rule of deduction, I like that. Uh, <laughs> Tea is smart. Deduced. I didn't She's, follow any of that. No, well, you failed at math, so. <laughs> Didn't take it. <laughs> Vodka doesn't necessarily say what's in it. You have to actually really research this if you want to know what's in your vodka, whether it's made out of potatoes or red winter wheat or barley or um, in the case of Hangar One, they actually make it out of grapes. All spirits have a backbone, if you will. It's just like a person. Not like this guy. Yeah, you don't want some weakling. This is Popov. You want to try everything. Just try it. Just try it and see if you like it. At if, the same time. At, well, no. See, that's wrong. Why are you chiming in? I'm trying to educate people, and you're just adding some idiotic commentary that makes no <laughs> sense. It's mm -hmm. going to confuse people at the end of the day. So, try them all together. <sighs> There's a certain way to taste any spirit, and this is what you're going to do. First, you're going to rinse out your mouth with the spirit and spit. Just spit it out like mouthwash, because it'll get out any sort of food or thing that you were eating before that. That flavor is all going to come out. Then what you want to do is take another swig, swish it around for a little bit in your mouth, hold it there for about 10 seconds, and then spit it out. You're going to get a whole array of flavors all in your mouth. And if it keeps lingering and lingering and lingering on your palate, that's when you know you have a really great spirit, actually. Not that alcohol flavor, not the burn, not any of that, but an actual flavor that lingers in your mouth. That is what he said. Mm hmm What you want to do is pick a spirit that's actually made where it comes from. If you want to pick vodka, for instance, 
why don't you get one from Russia or Poland? They've been doing it for the longest. They've been doing it really well. These are mid-range, so $25 to $30 for this guy right here. Okay. And then uh, you have $30, $35 or so, depending on where you get it from. And these are liters, by the way. This is buying a liter of alcohol for that price. Usually you get them in 750s. So you can buy a liter of these for that price, which is about 10 more ounces, so a few more drinks. The cool thing about these two that I picked and it, I wanted to explain is that Russian Standard has been around for a really long time. Um, it is a classic Russian vodka, very basic, has a lot of character to it. It doesn't have a ton of flavor. Vodka is generally is supposed to be odorless and flavorless. It's clean. It's clean, nice, which is why you can lean drunk. Drink it on your lunch break and nobody will know. <laughs> this is Rika Vodka. They took a lot of time into making this bottle and effort. And they take a lot of time and effort to actually make the spirit in there. This one I really love. They actually, it's from Iceland. Um, they created this vodka in a completely green distillery. So not only do they make a really beautiful spirit, they have a completely solar powered distillery that they run off of. So it's, you're contributing to these great practices that people are putting into play with actually making a green distillery and not throwing their waste anywhere they feel like. And um, actually- That way you can get drunk on your high horse, which is the best place to get oh drunk. Oh God, that's the Then greatest. after you're drunk, you can brag about how awesome you are for buying this particular vodka and saving the world. Mm -hmm. By drinking this, you're actually making a donation. You could probably write it off on your taxes. Don't do that. That's not fine. <laughs> All right, so let's move on and talk about some gin. Gin. So gin's unaged, another white spirit that we have here. How gin originally came about is that it was a medicine, like most spirits. That's what I call my alcohol. Yeah, it's mama's medicine. Mama's medicine. See, there we go. People actually don't want this when you put it in cocktails, although it adds really great character, really great flavor, and most of the time, actually, if you don't tell people that it's gin and you put it in a cocktail, they actually don't know. The only martinis I actually like are gin martinis. Oh, see? You are refined, Noah. Put my pinky up on everything. So you're <laughs> saying with a good enough gin, you can serve it to someone and they won't even know it's in their drink. They won't. Which also works with rohypnol. Mm. Fun fact. Oh, it does actually. That's fun. I've done that a few times. Yeah, I like to do that when I'm home alone on a Friday night and just molest myself. It's really fun. Or night let your pet crawl all over you. Yeah. So I'm so. looking at these labels, and most of these come from London, it looks like. Most of these come from London. That's in England. Yeah, it's very good. London Dry is a style that we all know. It's the very juniper heavy SM, punch you in the face, hold you down, but you kind of like it sort of thing. Brokers is a great example of a classic London dry, and Aviation is an example of a, of a London dry gin. That's a cocktail, it's not a, it's not a gin. More importantly, well, is it bad <laughs> that I would buy this solely for the tiny top hat? Because no. Because that's not how you would recommend shopping for alcohol. It, that is how I recommend it, it's actually adorable. The next style that we're gonna talk about is um, a new American, and a great example is Hendrix, and I have the St. George uh, Tour. The new American focuses on different botanicals in your gin. So you like this because they focused on rose petals and cucumbers. That's the cucumber. Mm -hmm. Case of boar. Exactly. So when you order what Hendrix. What flavor? I'm translating for tea. <laughs> like five seconds later. I know. <laughs> he had to think about it for right. a minute. All right, let's get into tequila, I believe is the correct pronunciation. No, it's huh? incorrect. You're thinking of tequila. Damn it. Te uh, tequila. Yes. Four loco. Tequitos. Clamato. I know that uh, mezcal is actually popping up everywhere. A little side note, all tequila is mezcal. Not all mezcal is tequila. It's made in a different way. So, so tequila is made from <laughs> juniper. No, it's not. It's actually made from agave, and agave is actually in the lotus family. It's not a cactus. Tequila uh, tastes different than mezcal because tequila, they don't smoke the agave. The, they smoke the, aga the agave underground for mezcal, and that's how you get that smoky, crazy flavor. So mm. mezcal is like the big, bad, older brother of tequila. He's the dangerous one. He's the one you want to date. The bad boy. Yeah, he's you the bad boy. You want to piss your parents off. 
This is the, the guy that went to, um, you know, private school and uh, graduated from Stanford. Tequila always starts off as this guy right here, as your Blanco. Um, and then they age it, and as it ages, you get Reposado and Añejo, just depending on how long it ages in the barrel. As they age it, it collects more color. That's why Añejos are a little bit darker than your Reposado, but it all starts with your base spirit, your Blanco. Now, the people at the, the restaurant who work for me in the kitchen, they call me Blanco, and that means that you're the best. No, that means you're white. Not sure that's true. I really love this brand. This is Tequila Ocho. Tequila Ocho is a gorgeous brand. It actually has vintages. Mm. So it changes every year. It's kind of cool. It's that's like pretty wine. cool. Yeah. You want to avoid all the marketing schemes. There is a lot of companies out there that are massively produced and aren't very good. <laughs> um, one brand is made by Paul Mitchell. You can Google that and you'll find out what it is. <laughs> Just try something that looks like a smaller brand. You're looking at a price point of maybe about $45 a bottle, so it's not super expensive for this brand. You don't have to go crazy expensive. Actually, tequila can be pretty cheap. That's kind of the point of it as a spirit. And if $45 sounds like a lot to you, that's about what you'd be paying for the Paul Mitchell tequila. Yes. Just FYI. It's actually more. Yeah. It's actually more money. Pick the Blanco first and don't make the huge commitment. Just pick the Blanco and if you really, really like it and you think that it's a great Blanco, then go ahead and splurge on the rest of the guys. The good news is though, if you buy that Paul Mitchell tequila and you drink a lot of it, if you're a girl out there, you don't actually have to have somebody hold your hair when you vomit because it goes right into it and it ends up being better for your hair. Oh, that actually would be good for marketing for him. That's right. Dear Paul Mitchell, please pay us $2 million now. <laughs> yeah. Also, you're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. This is like the tequila that rides a motorcycle. This is how tequila and scotch created a baby and made this beautiful product. It doesn't have to be fancy. And actually, mezcal is unaged. If they age it, they don't really know what they're doing. It's not supposed to be aged. That's hmm. an American thing. This one actually is really strong and potent, and I actually like that about it. I'm a big scotch drinker, so I love that really big, crazy smoke bomb that you get in the face from it. So that is why I picked this one. This is from Del Maguey. Del Maguey is a really great uh, mezcal company. They have all different kinds of mezcal, and they come from all different types of agave. Um, the only agave that you can use for tequila is Blue Weber, but with Mezcal, you can use any kind of agave you like. Well, that's it for us today. We learned a lot about a lot of booze, but guess what? There's more kinds of booze out there, so come back. One more episode. We're gonna have Nikki back, and we're gonna talk about, uh, you know, brown spirits. Yeah, yeah, if you guys wanna learn how to go shopping for whiskeys, American whiskeys, yes. and rum the right way, Mm -hmm. Hit the thumbs up and we'll be back with part two. I mean, we're gonna do part two either way, but yeah. you know, just encourage us, we need it. <sighs> Special thanks to Nikki for coming out again today and make sure you guys subscribe to taste it. Otherwise, you'll have no idea how many bottles of these I took home with me and drank tonight. Noah. All of them. The answer is all of the above. All of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs>